Hello, my dear postgraduate students. Welcome to Rats and Pathology for Postgraduates. I hope you people like the cartoon on the screen. The topic for the day is immunohistochemistry. The idea of my classes is that the students should attempt all the questions and get as much marks as possible in the theory paper. Neither you nor me is a technical expert. Though some of you might be having a good background and experience with immunohistochemistry, I'm sure this class will be of benefit to us. So I welcome you to this class. A lot of these monograms are available for reference. In today's class, I shall be covering these subheadings. Always think of the subheading and we will not be missing anything. Incidentally, this is a picture of a cell with a surface antigen to which a primary antibody is getting attached. And this in turn gets attached to a secondary antibody which is labeled and what we visualize. Have this basic principle in mind as I proceed. The history behind this is Albert Kohn's in 1941 introduced the peroxidase antiperoxidase immune complex method. Avidin biotin technique was also found out later. This is palatable with most of the fixatives and can be used for electron microscopy as well. The pitfalls that have to be averted will be, please understand that it is a scrupulous technique. Checking of the antibody is needed. It should not be outdated. Positive and negative controls must always be used. And a sausage block wherein 100 tissue antigens can be identified at the single drop of antibody is also available nowadays. Continuing with the history, this in fact is the pioneer, Paul Ehrlich. In fact, he has contributed a lot to the autoimmune diseases and so on. And he introduced the magic bullet, the term antibody against an organism from which monoclonal antibodies were also derived. And these people were given the Nobel Prize in 1908. Also, we found that the B cells gave development to the plasma cells or the myeloma cells. The human mouse hybrid cells were found out by Gerard Schwaber in 1973. And in 1975, the concept of immortalization of the myeloma B cell fusion, later on called the hybridomas, was introduced. Again, a good number of authors have been awarded the Nobel Prize for the discovery in this field. So please do understand that there is a lot of and a continuous contribution that is happening even now. For instance, Greg Winter, he tried to humanize the monoclonal antibodies and eliminate the reactions in the patients. There has also been a therapeutic use of the monoclonal antibodies. And finally, in 2018, just about three or four years back, the monoclonal antibodies have been used in cancer therapy by Ellison. So, Basically, there are two techniques. One is by use of polyclonal antibodies. Colloquially, we can call it as non-specific. Secondly, there will be the monoclonal antibodies, which are highly specific and diagnostic. They can again be divided into the primary and the secondary antibodies. The primary is one which gets attached earlier to which the secondary antibody, which has got a coloring substrate, 
can be used. There is also a technique called the sandwich technique, wherein there is one antibody, another antibody, and then there is an antigen that is getting attached, streptavidin. So this is called a sandwich technique. These are all used. When you write an answer, I would like you people to kindly mention all the three. Polyclonal, monoclonal, primary, secondary, and then sandwich. What are the basic principles? Antigen and antibody together form immunology. In the tissues, it is called as immunohistochemistry. What we will have to do is, whenever there is a reaction, we can't see but we will have to visualize it or even photograph it for reference. For this, we use what is called a chromogenic method, a peroxidase, antiperoxidase, and then the avidin biotic technique are the two chromogenic methods. Also, immunofluorescence can be used wherein the antibody is tagged to a fluorophore and that can be a fluorescein or rhodamine that can be attached which gives a bright, shiny color to it. So these things you people will have to mention. And this is a history of a normal glomerulus and the tubules, which are turning out to be positive for nephrilizing, a normal histology. Enzyme substrates. There are substrates means there are other substances which are used for the rapid progress of it. One is enzyme substrate called as alkaline phosphatase and horse radish peroxidase. Alkaline phosphatase and horse radish peroxidase. Also, you find that chromogenic, chlorogenic, or chemiluminance and substrates can be used, such as DAP, BCIP, MBT, etc. So these are all commercially available. Chromogenic immunohistochemistry is this. Now, this is a particular picture taken from Wikipedia to show that there are two types of these antigens. One is a surface antigen, another is intracytoplasmic, or it can be an organelle antigen, to which you find an antibody is formed, and then there is a secondary antibody, that is a coloring chromogen. So these are two systems that have been given concepts that have been given in Wikipedia. Also, as I mentioned earlier, immunofluorescence. This is a skin biopsy and to which you find that there is a fluorescence that has been attached, which can be identified. A case of kinoscolin purpura, wherein the IgE antibody gets deposited on the capillary walls. This is one of the fundamental basic slides which you will have to memorize. You find that there are various antigens and one of which is being introduced into the experimental animal and the spleen reacts, it proliferates. Also, you find that this is fused along with the myeloma cells. The myeloma cells are supposed to be having a very long shelf life. And this myeloma cells and this splenic cells fusion is called the hybridoma technique. And they can be cultured in hat medium, selective for the positive cells. And after which you find that there is a sacrifice of it and then the monoclonal antibodies are being harvested. So kindly memorize this particular sequence. If possible, you can even draw a diagram of it. The rabbit cells are used as a source for the myeloma cells. I told you earlier that the hat medium is used for growth. What does this hat medium mean? Hypoxanthin, aminoptrin, and thymidin. It is a selection medium of mammalian cell culture. The unfused myeloma cells cannot grow as they lack hypoxanthin guanine phosphoribosyl transferase. And unfused splenic cells also cannot grow indefinitely because of the limited span of the lifespan of the splenic cells. So when they are fused together, they continue to grow for a long time. And that is the advantage of a hybridoma technique. I hope you people see what is lower down. 
Vision is the art of seeing what is invisible to others. Probably a good quote for immunohistochemistry. How do you prepare the samples? They can be taken in thin slices. They have to be pre-treated with heat and protease has to be used. Also, you find that there has to be a reduction in the non-specific immunostaining, blocking the endogenous biotin or enzymes prior to staining. They have to be incubated in blocking buffer and they can also be incubated in commercially used blocking buffers. Positive and negative controls will have to be used throughout. What are the types of antibodies? The types of antibodies can be the anti-mouse antibody that we have seen. They can be the human antibodies, which are being used of late. And the third one will be the monoclonal antibodies against viruses and fungi. So the immunohistochemistry is not a special property of pathology alone. It can be used in microbiology as well. What are the commons? There are various things which can be used. One is a fresh frozen tissue, formalin fixed tissue, and a vibrotome derived. A fresh frozen tissue through a cryostat, it has got a poor morphology, but higher magnification can be obtained. Second one, formalin fixed. Some antigens can be retrieved while others are not. So there is a loss of the antigens in it. Vibrotome. There is a heat thawing artifact and slow development of the sections is there. So these three methods I would like you to kindly mention. The cryostat, formalin fixed and vibrotome and what are the disadvantages of each. So this is a use of the monoclonal antibody in an anaplastic astrocytoma. So there's a tumor over here and the usage of the antibody, GFAP, glial fibrillary acidic protein, or the P53, which is to denote the growth factor, key for the proliferation index. These are the various antibodies which can be used for an anaplastic astrocytoma. To give you a couple of examples, we had mentioned the secondary antibody. It is raised against the immunoglobulin. So here there is an immunoglobulin to which you find another antibody is getting developed. So it is more sensitive. There is an amplification of the signal. And also you find that it can be conjugated to the fluorescent or enzyme, enzyme identifier. And now what is a secondary antibody? It is raised against immunoglobulins. IgG, particularly in experimental animals. It is more sensitive. There is an amplification of the signal, that is magnification. And last, it can be conjugated to a coloring substrate, fluorescent or enzyme identifier. So that is the advantage of the secondary antibody that you people are seeing over here. How do you detect the antigens? What is the principle behind it? It is breaking protein and then cross-linking caused by fixation. Higher, heat-induced epitope retrieval. And third one is enzyme digestion pyre, proteolytic-induced epitope retrieval. These are the methods used for retrieving the antigens and then trying to identify them. The methods for covering, uncovering the hidden antigenic sites. These types of antigens we have already mentioned, they can be surface or cytoplasmic or organeller. And this is an upload from the Wikipedia. This pin four here, it is positive in a normal prostatic gland, whereas it is negative in a malignant adenocarcinoma. What can be the troubleshooters? One is autofluorescence. Without any signal, you find that it can fluoresce on its own, leading to false positivity. This can occur in any immunological study. Second one is cross-reactivity. Look at this one. 
there is a cross reaction between one and then another as a result of which we can get false positive reactions in this case there is a specific reaction and it is a true positive one here again there can be a cross reaction between two sources it can be the antigen epitope and the antibody is over here please have this in mind your vision is limited only by you see yourself as truly capable human being that you are how do you reduce the non specific immunostain one by using endogenous biotin enzymes that need to be blocked or quenched respectively incubate it in a buffer to block the antibody stain changing the time and the temperature dilution of the primary and the secondary antibodies this dilution principle is used in any immunological study take the vidal for example and the remedies for it will be common blocking buffers normal serum gelatin and bsc and commercial blocking agents these can be used for non specific immuno stain the common monoclonal antibodies this is an age old list and this was one of the first list that was given when immunostechemistry was introduced so you can people can go through this particular list and there are much more for you people to identify in fact you will be using much more and this is another list so epithelial membrane antigen these are the tumors where it can be positive e catheterin where it is positive cytokeratin 7 ck20 carcinoma embryonic antigen so the list is never ending and ever growing these are the applications of immunohistochemistry which you people can mention in your answer and the panel of antibodies it continues kindly go through it and you people can make use of it and so also this this is a particular list that i had taken from the source that is given over here so for muscle differentiation what all can be used nerve sheath differentiation what do you use melanocyte what do you use endothelial cell fibrohistiocytic and epithelial differentiation so this is a list that i had derived from this medical oncology i would like you people to kindly make use of this also the general uses of immunohistochemistry one in identifying the replicating cells locating cells that are signaling locating apoptotic bodies identify activation sites identify the different types of cells and examine the cytoskeletal structures these are other uses other than diagnosis of cancer itself mission without action is a daydream action without vision is a nightmare a japanese proverb the applications of immunohistochemistry again in malignancy this is very important to distinguish between a benign and a malignant tumor to identify the cell of origin of course this is most important to identifying the multiplying capacity the growth potential tumor staging primary site of the metastatic tumor classification of undifferentiated tumors and detection of micro metastases this particular list obviously you people will have to memorize also as i had mentioned it can be used in microbiology cytomegalovirus simplex virus human papilloma virus hepatitis c and papilloma virus sars virus etc these can be identified by means of immunohistochemistry kindly by heart this what are the contaminants in a hybridoma they can be from the primary media itself growth factors hormones or transparent or in vivo within the tissue there can be host antibodies proteases nucleases nucleic acids and viruses so these can be contaminants in this particular diagram i have taken from wikipedia and i would like you people to only mention this list how do you develop a monoclonal antibody it can be because of phage display a principle 
transgenic mice, B cell immortalization, and single B cell cloning. These four things I would like you people to kindly mention in your answers. And this is the detail of the phage display itself. Can you get false positive reactions or false negative reactions? Very much so. False positive reactions can be due to cross reactivity as I had shown in the previous slide. Non-specific binding of the antibody to the tissue protein. Presence of endogenous peroxidase or avidin biotin in some of the tissues. So this acts as an enzyme. Entrapment of the normal tissues by the tumor cells. For example, a muscle can give rise to a picture of an abdomyosarcoma. Release of protein from the normal cells invaded by the tumor. Multi-hormone secretion, example pancreas. All these can give rise to false positive picture. Then when do you get false negative? When the antibody is inappropriate or denatured, there is a wrong concentration, loss of antigen through autolysis, antigens getting lost after fixation or formalin, low density of the tissue antigen and positive morphological diagnosis is always preferred to an immunohistochemistry. This particular one we should have in mind. Immunohistochemistry is not the ultimate. After all, you are trying to confirm your diagnosis and hence a positive morphological diagnosis definitely has its say. Please by heart this entire list, it is of paramount importance. How do you remove the antibodies? Anions, a chromatography, cation exchange, anion exchange, single exclusion chromatography, affinity chromatography. And when this fails, there will be a strong background staining because of endogenous enzymes, endogenous biotin or lectin, secondary antibody and defect in the primary antibody. This diagram is a repetition, but listen to me carefully. In this case, tumor cells are being injected into an experimental animal and they keep proliferating. Here again, I find that there is an antigen that is being introduced, which leads to the production of antibodies. This is a plasma cell, and then there is a production of antibodies. Fusion of these two produces a hybridoma. The hybridomas are screened for the desired antibody. And when there is a clonal expansion, we get what is called as a monoclonal antibody. This particular one can be used for the identification of any tumor in a tissue. And it is the same thing, but here the story is different. The splenic cells are there, the myeloma cells are there, there is a hybridoma. But then this is being used. This is an ELISA plate that is used and it is used for screening of the various organisms. For example, in SARS-CoV-2, you find that the antibody is being produced for the diagnosis. So microbiology, either the tissue sample or the serum can be used. There can be staining variations. You find that the monoclonal antibody has been used in all the three sections in different sites. In one, I get a moderate positivity. In another, there is an intense positivity. And in some, there is also a loss of this one. So we will have to distinguish between a false positive, a false negative, and a background stain. This particular slide is very important. In fact, I taken it from a good source and the person must have been knowledgeable. What are the advantages and disadvantages? Advantages are highly specific recognition of any one epitope of an antigen. Antigen, just one part it is able to recognize. So it is highly specific. Immortal cell lines by the hybridoma technique are being produced. So it can be used forever. It has got a high consistency and reproducibility. There is a minimal background noise or non-specific staining. If at all there is an error, it can be rectified. These are the advantages. 
the disadvantages are it is quite costly and you need a good technique for it secondly it takes time for the monoclonal antibodies to develop third one is the antibodies are specific it is good but sometimes they are too very specific and they cut across a lot of these species as a result of which we find that we are not able to distinguish between two variants of a particular malignancy so that can be a disadvantage and it is vulnerable to a change in the epitope this can lead to reduced binding capacity leading to false negativity we have come to the end of the class as i mention always think of the subheadings the subheadings will take you to the answer see you in the next class thank you